Hey, hello, I am Danny Two Shoes and I wanna share with you what I've been working on for the past several years. Now I have spent hundreds and hundreds of hours working on this from hand drawing and animating most of the assets from the player character to the enemies, NPCs, environments, all the way up to programming using blueprints in the Unreal Engine. Now I do say that I have spent several years working on this, but the truth is I have taken a lot of breaks in between for months and months mainly because I lost motivation. So the main reason for this devlog, besides sharing what I've been working on, is to try to help me stay motivated. So if you like what you see, or you'd like to see me continue, you're interested to see where this can potentially go, it would mean the world to me if you subscribe, like the videos, maybe even leave, leave some kind comments, your thoughts, tips, anything to help me stay motivated. I would greatly appreciate it. Now, this game is heavily inspired by Hollow Knight. You could probably tell by the player character. And it is also inspired by Binding of Isaac, the roguelike uh, mechanics of that game, which I will show a little bit later in the video. I'm going to split this video into a few parts so you can check the timestamps if there's a certain part you wanna, you wanna check out. Now, the first thing I wanna talk about is the premise of the story. Without getting into too much details about the backstory, pretty much there was a prosperous kingdom with a royal family and they were invaded. It turned out that the royal family from several generations ago signed a contract and the current family didn't want to agree to the terms. So they were invaded and they were defeated. They weren't able to defend themselves. I don't want to get into details about who invaded. Maybe I'll leave that for a future video, but everybody was pretty much killed. They lost their mortal bodies and all that remained was their souls of all the people, the citizens. And over many years, most of those souls have become corrupted transformed into vile creatures and those are the enemies we're going to be fighting in the levels that i'm going to show you in a little bit now what happens is in the beginning of this game we're going to take control of a soul a wandering soul what happens is a soul can find a skull and they can put it on and they can gain the abilities of whoever owned that skull before in that previous person's life from their abilities, their fighting style, their personality. That's kind of a little bit what you saw in the intro cutscene that I that I animated. That was the player character putting on the skull, gaining the person's abilities, whoever the skull belonged to. So in the beginning of the game, the player character finds the skull and shortly after he comes across Ossesbury, which is gonna be the central hub. Now, before I show off Ossesbury, let me start by showing the player character movement that I've been working on. I've created an animation state machine, so it, it'll play all his animations depending on what state he's currently in. So right now he's an idle. We can move him. Right. He has a turning animation. So when he switches direction, it quickly turns and then it continues moving. Jump. Right. I wanted the game to have tight controls. So I gave full control when he's jumping. So when he's jumping, you have full control to move left, right stop you can also let go of the jump button to do a short jump All right he has a landing animation a falling animation there's also a dash dash All right All right ground dash i've added some dust particles and i also put this little wall here just to show off the wall slide wall jump All right All right wall wall slide to a dash all right, so that, that's the basics of the character movement. I've also started working on a water system so he can jump into the water, a swimming animation, and he can jump out. All right, so that's the basics for that. For combat, he has a bone sword, as you can see. You probably saw it in the intro. He has it on his back, All right? He can slash up, right? Down, or he can be standing, All right? Attack, attack up. So that's the basic character movement that I've created. <laughs> I wasn't intending on that, yeah. So there's a few objects that I've been working on. Right, destruction. Here's a grass, grass that I've made. I've, I, I've, This is fully animated. There's no physics or wind, right? He can walk by it and it will rustle. And he can also cut the grass, right? And it falls down. Okay, over here we see, right? A chest I've been working on. All right, you can open it. I've also put physics so he can push it. Right. 
I'm still currently working on it because the part is, I'm not sure if I want it to have full physics because if it turns, if you don't open it and it turns, it's going to look very weird if it's a closed chest and it's turned upside down. So I still don't know what to do with that. Okay, so that's the basics of the character movement. Uh, we have also bombs, right? So uh, I've I've added uh, controls, so you can use a controller. All right, bomb, press it again to drop it. Drop it. Next part. So you can carry it around. Drop it by pressing it again. Now, if you, I put it so if if he slashes, he kind of throws it. Jump, slash up. You see. So I'm I'm kind of I'm kind of happy with with the the bomb mechanic. Nah, that's one thing I have to fix. Uh, if he goes very fast and he slashes, the bomb goes so far. Look. Boom! Look at that. Jesus Christ. I actually don't know about the dash. Let me see. Dashing. Da Drop it. What if I what if I dash to an attack? Is it gonna go super far? Oh, oh, look, it bounced on me. <laughs> dash attack. Oh. Okay, it <laughs> fell in the water. Okay. So let's move on to Ossesbury. So in the beginning of the game, after the character, the player character comes across a skull, he puts it on, he's gonna come across the central hub of the game, which is Ossesbury. So this is this is the game, uh, the central hub of the game. Now I've just created the, the basic layout of it. It's still very early in development. I just wanted to know where I'm gonna place the buildings. So don't mind a lot of the black foreground background. I didn't add that yet. I didn't add foreground background. So my, just know that it's going to be a little bit empty. So once you come in, you're going to find that this town is basically deserted. There's only one person here, Nolan. We can talk to him. And through playing the game, going the levels, we're going to find NPCs that we can send back here that can help us to progress, to get stronger, better such as a bank teller we can send uh, to the bank. So we can send currency we find in the level back to the bank or at least some of it so we can use it here in the town, right? A blacksmith, right? A blacksmith. I did a little bit of work on the blacksmith's building so we can go inside that, right? I created a little uh, water, what is it called? Water mill? No. I'm kind of happy with how it came out. We have a saloon, we can find a bartender, send him back to the saloon, uh, and a shopkeeper, right? So this is the basic town that we're gonna be in. And here, I've already started working a little bit on the, the blacksmith. So we can go in here, blacksmith, we can exit, right? So this is the main area. Okay, and then once we progress a little bit further, that's where we can enter the levels and we can start the roguelike gameplay mechanics of the game. Okay, so this is the first level that I'm working on. Uh, don't don't mind, it's, it's, it's a little dark here. I didn't add any lights yet. I've just been working on the basic layouts of the rooms. So the way it's gonna work is gonna be like Binding of Isaac. It's gonna be pre-made rooms with doors, as we see here, you see, right? A left door, a right door, Right over here, a door on the bottom, also a door on the top. So it's going to generate random rooms that I've pre-made to create a random uh, layout. So if we see here, if I exit, right, we can zoom out, right? This is the layout, right? Like this. This is just basics. This is just basically what I've been working on, randomly generating the, the first level. If we Exit, let's play again. Exit. Right. It's creating different layouts. Now it's kind of like a vertical layout because the starting room, I put a room with all four doors. So I'm sure it's gonna be a lot more var uh, more variation to the layout if the first starting room is gonna only have one door, maybe to, to the right. So I've created a bunch of different rooms. This is what I'm currently working on all the different room layouts. As you can see here, we have rooms with a, a down left door, uh, with a down right door, left right, uh, up down, up left right, all the different variations. This is the part that's very tedious for me because there's so many different rooms that I have to make. So every time a level is loaded, 
it has some variation to it. It doesn't, it's not the same level every time you play. I think that's important for a roguelike game. So let's see, if we open up, let's see, what's one room that I've worked on? If we open here, let's say left, right, 06. Right, so we have right, just over here, right? A basic little room that I did a quick layout of. Let's try another one. Let's see, what do we have? Down, down left, 03. Here's another one, right? It has a down door, it has a left door. What about, let's try up, up right 01. How does this look? All right over here with some water. Right. So I'm, this is what I'm currently working on, making all the different room layouts. So when it loads, it's a unique, uh, a unique setting, I should say. Okay, so if we go here, right, we can just quickly change transition and it goes to the next room. All right. I'm quite happy with, with how it came out. I think it's it feels nice and smooth. Just come down, right? And we can just jump down. Boom. All right. All right. So that's that's the basic layouts that I've created. Now every level is gonna have a shop. It's gonna have an item room. So you can get an item, get more powered up to give yourself an advantage when you fight the level's boss. So maybe just to show you, here's the basic item room that I've, that I started working on, All right? We come in, we see a pillar here. I'm planning on adding some light, some animals here. So it seems a little bit more majestic, maybe a little bit more heavenly, right? So this will be the, the basic item room, a shop, basic room over here we come down the shops building and i'm still currently working on the inside of the shop right the shopkeeper and then the table here where he can put items you can come in and you can buy the items okay so that's pretty much everything i wanted to share with the current state of the game right now which right now i'm currently working on the room layouts that's what i'm currently working on so since I shared everything I wanted to share at this point in time, I want to end the video about showing a little bit about the bugs that I've encountered that I have yet to fix because I've just been pushing it aside. I made a list of some of the stuff. So first that I want to show about, we have here some water. So we can swim like I showed you. Now, if we wall slide and fall into the water, look, I, I can't control that anymore. He's stuck. <laughs> so I'm assuming I have to fix the, 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 the state when, when he's wall sliding. It probably, it doesn't register correctly when it gets into the, to the water trigger box. So there we have, that's one bug. Okay, here's another one. If we go into the water and we dash and we go back into the water, You see, this is weird. Sometimes, you see, look, I don't know why this happens. This, I don't know. This is probably gonna take me a little while to fix. He just stays there, he doesn't turn and he can't jump out of the water now. That's another bug. All right, another one with water again. <laughs> this water is tricky. I've pro I programmed the, the water all by myself. I didn't use any tutorials, I just try to do what I think is right. So there's a lot of bugs that I have to go back and fix. If we go to the wall, the wall slides. So that's a little bit different from entering. So even when he's swimming, he, it'll, he will enter a wall slide. So I probably have to, I, I think that's an easy fix. I can probably increase the priority of swimming above wall sliding. That can probably fix it. Okay. Okay, now here's another thing that is quite interesting. I, I'm not sure how to fix this. I'm probably gonna have to take a look at what I made for his animations, uh, for his attack animations and how I programmed it. If we, he has two attacks he can do back and forth. Boom, boom, one, two. But sometimes it cuts the animation. You see right there, it kind of like played the animate, the, the slash animation from the middle. I'm not sure why that happens. It happens sometimes. Right there, again. I don't know, that's another bug. I, I don't know how I'm gonna fix that. I'm gonna have to take a look. 
Okay, here's another one, right? So if we jump, right, he plays his landing animation. If we do something before he, right before he touches the ground, it will finish that animation and then it will play the landing animation. So if we jump, attack, it played, you see, it played the landing animation, even though we've been on the ground for like a good second. And then if we do that walk, right, it looks weird, right? You see that? It play it still plays the landing animation because it queues up. All right, so that's another bug. Okay, so this is the last bug I want to show, and it has to do with the camera. Now, I created a blueprint from the camera from scratch to try to make it feel like a Metroidvania camera. So if we notice, if we turn, the camera also turns a little bit more uh, into the direction he's facing, which you'll find a lot of Metroidvanias have that, right? Just like that. Now, the camera follows the player through the level, so naturally, I have to put camera restrictors in the map where I can actually lock. I can say, I don't want the camera to move up and down. I don't want it to move left and right or however, which is those red yellow boxes. Those are the camera restrictors. So when he is right here, I I put it right. This camera restrictor, I put it so it will not. The camera will not move up and down. Now, look at this. This I don't know how to fix this. Right. So if we're over here, right? Here, there's no camera restrictor. So we see the camera just naturally follows him uh, left, right. Over here, it locks onto the camera restrictor. The camera doesn't move up and down. We come out. Okay. Now, if we come here, we can see down. And now we just entered another camera restrictor. The camera will not move down. Once it's here, but it can move up. Look, it, it can move up. You see, it can still move up. But now if we enter another camera restrictor for this room and it locks it here, it doesn't move left, right, up, down. So this is where I can put enemies and we exit. Now we're in the old camera restrictor. The camera doesn't move up. What the hell, right? I don't understand. The camera restrictor is supposed to be able to move up. So I don't know, but the thing is, it still moves left and right. Because over here, this locks it left and right and up and down. But over here, it can still move left and right, but not up. I don't understand. That's a weird bug. I, I, I'm, I'm going to have to take a look at that. Okay, so that's pretty much everything that I wanted to show in the first episode of the devlog. I have worked on several enemies and I animated them. I just didn't put them into the game yet. So that's potentially for a future episode. If there's anything specific that you'd like to see, maybe you'd like me to go more into depth about uh programming the player character right his um blueprints i can get more into detail about that right i can show more about this if that's what you're interested in or the camera anything feel free to let me know if you like what you saw and uh, you'd like to see where this could potentially go it would really mean the world to me to subscribe to like the video maybe leave some helpful motivating comments for me. I would really greatly appreciate that. But that's pretty much all I wanted to say for now. I hope you enjoyed. Other than that, it's time for me to go. Bye-bye.